this is John with another episode of Engineering Awesome. Today, I'm going to redo the review for the Polymer 80 frame. I want to focus only on the frame this time and, and not include the slide. I'll, uh, I'll review that later, um, but I do want to go over this in a little bit more detail and just explain why I like one of these so much. So, first off, what is an 80% firearm? An 80% firearm, and you can buy these in AR-15s as well, uh, those are very popular. Uh, these are just now starting to catch on, but what it means to be an 80% complete gun is that the trigger group will not fit. Okay, so it, it takes some custom modification at home. Now, with an 80% lower, uh, they don't come with serial numbers. Uh, so that's, that's one interesting thing about having one of these. Now, what it takes to finish these is they've got built up polymer rails here, 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 and here. There's also a section here. This one's probably the most challenging one to get out. Uh, and all you really have to do, the manufacturer recommends using a drill press and a supplied mill. Uh, I used a Dremel. And that's not the manufacturer recommended method, but it worked pretty well for me. Uh, if it makes you nervous, definitely don't do it that way. Uh, I took it down pretty close to level with the rest of the frame that is molded, and then I used hand files to finish it off. It worked really well, and I didn't have any issues. Now, you also have to drill three holes into the frame. This one comes molded in. Uh, these two are three millimeter, if memory serves me correctly, and this one is four. The drill bits are supplied by the manufacturer. Um, when you're doing that, you do need to be pretty careful not to clamp it up too tight. Uh, I built one of these with a buddy, and he actually did have an issue with his. Uh, he clamped it too tight, and uh, we ended up having to enlarge the hole here, the larger hole on the other side, because it allowed the locking block to kind of cock a little bit, and his slide wasn't perfectly smooth. Uh, so that's, that's what it takes to finish an 80% lower. So what are the advantages of a Polymer 80 frame over an OEM? First is the accessory rail. This is a full Picatinny rail. So accessories that you would mount on any pistol uh, using a Picatinny system, you can mount onto this. With a Glock frame, it's got a single cut here. So a lot of the flashlights that you might want to add have to be Glock specific. This is also double undercut from the factory. Uh, and that's that's really nice. It, it makes it fit your hand very well for a compact firearm. Uh, this makes it feel more like a full size. We're also cut out right here, which allows you to use lower profile magazine releases. I actually tried an extended mag release. I really did not like it. Uh, I went back to an OEM factory uh, and it works excellent. There's also this little raised piece here. What this does is keeps you from hitting this by accident, or it helps keep you from hitting that. It doesn't eliminate it entirely. Um, I had an extended slide release, um, and there were no clearance issues that fit in here just fine, but I ended up going back to, uh, to OEM just because it fit here real nicely, and uh, I no longer had issues where I would catch that with my, uh, my thumb. Uh, this is also a straight grip just like you would see on a 1911. In fact, it very closely resembles a 1911 with the beaver tail here. Uh, it's got a, a pretty square feel uh, as well, and a lot of people really like that. You've got uh, people in both corners uh, that really like the Glock and then also really like the 1911. Uh, I'm one that likes the 1911 rather than the, uh, the traditional Glock grip. My wife, however, does like the Glock grip better. So that is one thing to, to take into consideration. So the Glock kind of humps back here and then comes in a little bit further right around here. Uh, she feels that she can reach the trigger a little bit easier. So that is that is an advantage uh, if you're going to have multiple people shooting it. Now one thing with these that in my opinion is uh, kind of a negative thing is so here's an empty mag. So you can see it kind of catches. Now, it, an empty mag pulls free just fine, and you can kind of kip it, and it works well. Now, here's a full mag. Okay, these are my carry loads 
Obviously, I don't have a slide on, so we'll be safe. You can see that with the rounds in here, and these are OEM mags, uh, with the rounds in here, the mag swells a little bit and doesn't pull free as easily. You can see the firearm jump in my hands when I'm trying to pull that out. So that is kind of something that detracts from these frames. Now, uh, the buddy that I built one of these with, uh, he's run a mag in and out doing so many drills that his actually fits fine now. So I think that you could probably sand it or maybe use some polishing compound and that would probably help quite a bit. All right, so components that I use to finish this out. Um, I used actually almost all OEM components. The only things that are non-OEM are the trigger shoe, the lock, the slide lock, and then the connector. So most of these components are going to be things that you're used to. Uh, I'll go through them one at a time. This one, pretty obvious. It just makes it easier to take down the firearm. Uh, I take my slide off a lot. I'm always doing something. Uh, so I, I do like to have this extended release on there. Now this connector is really pretty cool in my opinion. I think a lot of you will agree with me. So the triggers on Glocks, uh, probably the biggest detractor from a Glock is the trigger. These connectors help a lot. This is a three and a half pound trigger, but it's a ghost rocket connector. So if you look here, you can actually see that there's an extra piece of metal. This connector requires hand fitting. Okay, so it comes a little bit longer than that and you have to grind it down until the, the uh, trigger can be pulled just enough to make it fire. What you're doing is eliminating the over travel for, for very quick follow up shots and a short reset. Uh, I really like the reset on this. Uh, it's, it's excellent. Now, I am gonna go ahead and reassemble it so that I can show you the, uh, the trigger uh, now this this is just an apex uh, tactical trigger. It uh, it's flat. I like that shoe. One thing I I do wish it had was a little bit wider safety bar there, but that didn't matter much. Um, I did have a Gen 3 trigger bar. I knocked the OEM serrated trigger uh, pin through, uh, so it's molded on one side and you can see it on the other. Uh, all you have to do is is just knock it through the molded side, and uh, you can change it out with. Uh, uh, any trigger the shoe that you want. So I went ahead and did that just for feel. It really didn't change anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble it so that we can take a look at the the reset and the pull. Now you, as you can see it's empty uh, and we didn't have a mag in it. So this acts a lot like a two-stage trigger. It's got so much pre-travel but then I hit a wall with it. Okay and that it, it really feels nice. And then there's just a little bit more. Let me try and do this so that you guys can see. Let's look at the reset. Not much to it. It's really excellent. I love the reset on this gun. Um, I do wish it had a little bit less uh, pre-travel, but the reset on it is excellent. So I highly recommend one of these uh, Apex Tactical Trigger Shoes if you don't want to eliminate uh, pre-travel. Now I will be reviewing another trigger here shortly um, and it reduces pre-travel. Uh, it's really a very interesting upgrade so we'll go through that one soon on the other frame. Alright so I do want to go over holsters very quickly okay. So right here I have a Blackhawk. I have two Blackhawks actually. So this is a size 13, and this is just a Glock 19, okay? And I do store them with, with these little clips in them. Now that it's together, this is Glock 19, okay? The Picatinny rail does not allow it to fully holster. That's pretty important about these Polymer 80s. You can't use normal holsters that you would use with, say you already own a Glock 19, you can't reuse holsters in most situations. So now let's go over this size 13, which can be had very cheaply on Amazon, and I will link that in the description below. All right, so look at that. That fits perfect. There's no wobble side to side. There's no wobble up and down. The only thing it does do is you can slightly pull it out 
but you can't actually release it. It's got a nice smooth pull on it. There is a little bit of friction, but that's exactly how I like it. It's nice and firm. You don't have to worry about it as you're moving around. Uh, and I actually do like that it, it uh, comes a little bit lower. The, the slide is actually more like right, right around here, but it covers a threaded barrel. Uh, so that's, that's pretty nice, in my opinion. Some people don't like that. I guess you could always cut it off if you wanted to. But if... All right, sorry about that abrupt ending. I wanted to do this more face to face. So with this review, uh, when I hit 2000 subscribers, I'm actually going to be giving away uh, one of these frames that I just reviewed. I'm gonna be giving away a brand new one, uh, so it's totally legal to ship uh, with no FFL, and uh, it'll be black, and it will be a, uh, a compact version just like this, uh, with the aggressive texturing and everything. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you do subscribe to the channel and make sure that uh, you leave a comment below. Uh, and share this video with your friends. Uh, I'm trying to help grow this channel a little bit and uh, see where we can't take it. So if you guys have any questions, anything you want me to review, uh, or any questions on this, uh, just go ahead and leave a comment down below and uh, I'll get back with you. Thanks for watching.